All right, thank you for joining this Tenant Cloud webinar. In today's webinar, we are going to be covering a full system demo of the Tenant Cloud platform. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to post them in the chat thread and we'll go ahead and answer your questions live at the end of the presentation. Likewise, if you have any questions that come up after the presentation has ended, please feel free to reach out to our support team at support at tenantcloud.com, or you can create a support ticket from inside of your Tenant Cloud account. And you can also reach us by phone via the phone number in the footer of the Tenant Cloud website. You can also reach us via instant chat via the help center, which is at tenantcloud.com forward slash FAQ for frequently asked questions. Also, there are a lot of other resources available to you on the Tenant Cloud platform. If you find that videos are a good way for you to learn how to use various parts of the platform, then you can go ahead and check out our Tenant Cloud YouTube channel. You can just type in Tenant Cloud YouTube channel into your search engine and it'll pull up the Tenant Cloud YouTube channel where we have over a hundred. In fact, I think now it's actually a few hundred videos ranging from FAQ videos to prior webinars to uh, just other helpful content that we have covered on the Tenant Cloud YouTube channel about the Tenant Cloud product as well as just about the property management industry as a whole. We also have a Tenant Cloud podcast. If you just type in Tenant Cloud podcast, you can listen to that wherever you like listening to your favorite podcasts. And so there's a lot of other resources out there. Our help center also is a great resource. It is the most up-to-date resource. Anytime we do a new update, the first place to get an update about how to do things in the system, if we've changed the way that something works or we've improved a feature or introduced a new feature, you're going to find that information in the Help Center first. And again, that is tenantcloud.com forward slash FAQ. And you can type in simple keywords. For instance, if you want to type in the word rent or lease or application, it'll bring up all of the step-by-step -step instructional articles on each of those topics along with screenshots and step-by-step -step instructions with arrows showing you where to click and the like. So it's a great resource, especially if you're first starting out on Tenant Cloud and you're just getting through that initial learning curve, the Help Center is a great resource for you. And of course, don't hesitate to lean on our support team uh, to get you through that initial learning curve as well. We're certainly happy to assist you in any way possible. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the Tenant Cloud presentation here. And we call the Tenant Cloud platform an end-to-end -end property management solution. And we call it that because no matter what it is that you need to do in the system, whether it is you have that vacant unit that you need to list online to start receiving prospective tenants' interest in the rental, and responding to those inquiries to the point that you need to start accepting applications and then screening those applications, moving them in, and then starting to collect rent and having them sign those, e-sign those leases and start charging uh, rental invoices automatically and have grace periods set up where you can start charging late fee invoices when tenants are late all the way to the maintenance side of things where you start having people submit maintenance requests and you need to track the maintenance and the progress of the maintenance requests or even for turning over units and you need to create maintenance requests and assign them to service pros and then have those service pros come in and paint and clean and do all the things that you need to do to get the rental ready for the next tenant all the way to paying the owners, the owner distributions and charging the owners the management fees and allowing the owners to view reports in the tenant cloud system. And then getting all of that information in the form of reports and accounting and for your year-end taxes, getting your W-9s and 1099s and all that stuff that you need to do at the end of the year to prepare, to prepare for the tax season. And all of that can be done in the tenant cloud system. And so that's what we mean by end-to-end -end property management system because it covers every aspect from the start 
of that process of managing a rental from that vacant unit all the way to the time that the tenant moves out and everything in between and all of the tools and the features that you need to properly manage the rental. And so Tenant Cloud again does all of that. We are not going to get into every single aspect of the system because Tenant Cloud, while it is easy to use and the learning curve is generally very short for the average user, there is a lot of power and a lot of functionality in the Tenant Cloud system. And so there's actually a lot in this gear wheel icon in the upper right corner of the website. And if you go here, you will see that there are all kinds of settings. So when you first start out on the Tenant Cloud platform, you are going to want to come in here and set up all of your individual settings for the various parts of the system, because this is actually what's going to power all of the things that are happening in here for the most part. So for example, you can set up your application fees. You can set up your uh, application questions and put in custom questions and make certain questions optional, make certain questions required and so on. And so you can do a lot of that in the tenant cloud system right here in the settings menu. So we're not going to go into all of these, uh, but you will want to come in here and set up things like your payments and your grace periods and all of that type of stuff. Now, to get started, we are going to go right into the listings section here where you will have a vacant listing. So you're probably going to want to list a rental. We currently have one that is listed and that is this rental here. And we can unlist this right now since we don't need that. And we're gonna go ahead and list a rental unit real quick. So let's go ahead and find the one we just unlisted. You have the option to do a just to your listing website, which is a free tenant cloud listing website, or you can go with the free ILS. In this case, we don't wanna do a free ILS because this is a demo website, but this is gonna syndicate it out to all of the major websites out there where people are looking for rental properties, such as apartments.com, Zillow, Trulia, Hotpads, etc. Next, we're gonna go ahead and just go through this real quick, make sure nothing has changed. You'll have the option to upload your primary photo and all of your add-on photos. The primary photo is going to be the one that is going to be the first image that most people are going to see on your listing on the various listing websites. You can add a YouTube video in the event that you want to do a walkthrough of the rental so that people can watch a virtual walkthrough of it. You can also add in any additional information. You do need to add what date this rental is going to be available, the term of which it is going to be available for, whether it's monthly or month to month, and what the lease term is, the rent amount, the deposit, the application settings. Do you allow pets in your property? Yes or no. In this case, we'll just select no for now. Do you want to receive rental applications online? Yes. Do you want to require your tenants to get a screening? If you select this yes right now, this is going to require that they pay the $45 at the time that they apply, which means that the application and the screening results are both going to be coming in simultaneously. In this case, we don't want that to happen because we want to review and uh, pre-qualify the prospective tenant first. So I'm going to select no. And But I do want them to pay an application fee and I want them to pay a $50 application fee. And... In order to collect that, you do need to have your bank account information set up, which is under that gear wheel icon setting in the upper right corner that we were talking about at the beginning of this presentation. Next, we'll select submit listing once we've verified everything is accurate and well done. The property is now listed. You can go back to the list or list another property. There are a lot of ways that you can invite tenants to apply. A quick one is right here on this page. You simply select the property you want them to apply for, put in their email address and click send invitation. It's going to send an email and it's basically going to say, hey, uh, landlord so-and-so is inviting you to apply for this rental. Please click here to initiate your application. And so it makes it really easy when you're standing there in a rental property after touring with somebody and you're doing that pre-close question and you ask them, hey, so on a scale of one to 10, how interested are you in this rental property? And they're like, oh, probably about a seven or eight. Great, well, let me go ahead and send you over this application right now. I'm gonna send you this link. You can send it right there from your mobile phone, 
tablet, whatever you've got on you, and they're going to get an email right then and there. And so they can actually start the application process right there in the rental while you're touring or when you get back to the office or whatever. It just makes it really seamless. Now, before all of that, though, uh, you're going to start getting leads. Once you've syndicated this listing out to all of the various rental listing platforms, you're going to start getting leads. And when you get those leads, they're going to come into the system like this. You're going to be able to view the profile. You can follow up with them quickly by sending a text message, which is one of the best ways to reach somebody who's inquired about your rental because there are a lot of research studies out there that show that the first landlord or property manager to respond to a lead the quickest tends to be the rental property that they lease at at the end of the day. And so the faster that you respond to those leads and the quicker you can get in front of them, the more likely you are to get that qualified tenant to rent at your rental property. So this is built into the tenant cloud system. You can send them a text message right here from the platform and they can text back to you and you're going to start getting those messages exchanged back and forth right here in our TC Messenger after you send them that initial message. Now, you can also invite them to apply here. Like I said, there's a few different places you can do that. You can also, this is a CRM. This is a customer relationship management tool. So you can actually track the progress of the time that the person puts in a request to the time that they complete an application to the time that you begin to move them in. And so there's a lot of functionality in here, adding tasks, reminders, notes, and other information, in addition to the ability to sending that text message and other things like changing the status of the lead, as well as whether it's a hot or a cold lead as well. So a lot of functionality here in the CRM. Now, once they have applied, it's going to come in as an application, right? And so right now we don't have any new applications, but I can go ahead and look at prior applications and I can view the application and all the information that they've provided. Now, this is just a test applicant. And so there's not a lot of information that they provided me with. However, you can customize that application via the gear wheel icon in the upper right corner. And you can ask as many questions as you want, almost an unlimited number of questions. I do think there is a limit. I think it's like 40 or 60 questions you can ask, uh, which hopefully you're not asking that many questions on an application that would probably deter most people from applying for your rental property. Uh, but you can, again, make a lot of fields optional, required. You can require a certain number of records. Like for instance, you want one prior landlord referral or you want five, you wanna know where they lived the fa past five years. Whatever it is, there's a whole lot of customization in the application to get as much information as you need. A couple of things I want to point out here real quick. One, you can export this by printing it and then saving it as a PDF or print it out. There's a timeline icon that you're going to see throughout the tenant cloud system. And this is essentially going to show you anything important or relevant that has happened with this particular applicant. And you can also set assignees for team members that it might be on your team to, hey, follow up with this applicant on this day to do this thing or whatever. And you can set the alerts. You can upload documents as a part of this uh, timeline. You can put in custom notes and you can also, again, review this and print out this entire log if you need to. Once you've got the application, you're probably gonna wanna do a rental screening. Now, Tenant Cloud has done a lot of work on building out our screening functionality. And there is we actually now have probably one of the most, if not the most robust screening product available out there to get you the most detailed information on your applicants. What a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of the bigger screening products out there, especially the ones that are instantaneous and they come to you right away, they're using data from one, basically one company in the United States that gets a lot of records. They pay for it weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever. And they just have this database just sitting in there of information on largely a national level. And so when you pay for that screening through those providers, it essentially pings that database and just gives you an instantaneous result based on whatever is in the database at that moment. However, that database could have outdated information and it could be missing important information on a local level rather than just what's on a national level. It could also provide you outdated information because something might have changed or it might have been a charge or a 
prosecution that got expunged or whatever, and that database may have outdated information. So you'll see here that you have the first three packages you can select from basic, background check, basic full check, and a credit check. So you can see what's included by clicking the little drop down, and it's going to tell you what's included. Now, after you select this, it's now going to say, do you want to do a county search as well? So there's two options. You can do a county search in the county that they current re currently reside in, or you can do an unlimited county search in real time in every county that the applicant has ever resided in. You can select one of those, and now it's going to take you to a third option, which says, do you want income insights? So that you can be informed when the income information provided by the rental applicant doesn't match the income information reported in their screening. This is becoming a huge issue across property management in general, where people are falsifying their applications with false information. They're even falsifying pay stubs, W-2s, and the like. And sometimes they're really good and it can be hard to identify the errors on them to see if they're actually legitimate without actually calling up the employer and verifying it yourself, which a lot of employers won't give that information to a third party. So this is a simple way to try to get a better understanding of whether or not the information that the applicant provided you with is accurate or not. And so you can select to include. And now at this point, you can select, is the applicant going to pay for these screening fees or are you going to pay it? You would typically pay it if the applicant has already paid you an application fee like I showed you early on where you can set up the application fee under the Gilreal icon settings. So either way, you can select this and then proceed with the screening. Once the screening comes back, then you are going to get screening results, which you can then view those screenings. Now, again, this is a demo account, so I don't have any real live information, but you're gonna be able to view the information of the screenings here, and you're gonna be able to get all of that information on that applicant to make sure that their income is as accurate as possible. It's been uh, that you've done county checks on them, that you've done the federal check on them, and that you have all of the information you need to make an informed and wise decision to protect your investment at your rental property by getting the best tenants at your rental property, and that you can keep your tenants around long term. And this product, these screening products are going to help you really do that. So definitely recommend that you screen your prospective tenants thoroughly. Now, aside from this, uh, there's a few other things that you're going to want to know about a property management platform, right? You're going to want to make sure that the ease of use of the platform is uh, front and center on the dashboard as soon as you log in, that it's easy to use, that the information you need is available in a snapshot. And that is true of the Tenant Cloud platform. And you can actually click and hold and drop and drag these around and reorder it to make sure that the information is the way you want it. And you can also choose to hide certain widgets if you don't need them on your dashboard. And this just helps you to get all the information you need in a quick snapshot so that you can see what's going on in your portfolio. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure is like we just talked about that the tenant screening tools available to you are powerful and they're getting you the information you need to make a good and wise decision for your prospective tenant. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to know is how about collecting rent? How can I collect rent? Well, after you have received applications and you have approved those applicants, you can now move those applicants in into the tenant cloud system. And so you can send an agreement to sign or you can attach a signed agreement. In this particular scenario, we are going to send to sign the agreement. Now, if I had a external lease that had been signed out of the tenant cloud system, then of course I can go ahead and just attach that and move the tenant in. So this is a good thing to use if you are coming from another software and you already have tenants that are already moved in with active leases and you don't necessarily need to send them anything to sign yet in the tenant cloud system until the renewal is up, you can just select this option and go through that process. We're going to go through send to sign agreement and click get started. You're going to notice in tenant cloud that there is this formula where there are steps 
for a lot of the processes in the tenant cloud system. In this particular case, it's already imported the information that we need for this particular tenant, including the property that they originally applied for, as well as the lease number is automatically gonna populate, but you can change this if you need to, if you have your own numbering system for your leases. We also wanna indicate whether it's a fixed lease type or month to month, and we also want to indicate whether or not it needs to go month to month after the end date. In the event that your lease has verbiage in it that states that if you don't sign a renewal or I don't offer you a renewal or whatever, it's going to continue month to month until one of us gives each other notice. Next, we can go ahead and add co-tenants and we can also make sure that this is shared with this tenant. In this case, it is by default and we're going to go ahead and select next step. From here, the lease transactions tab, we're going to go ahead and set the rent amount and also the first invoice date. In this case, we're going to say that the first invoice date is February 1st, but we're going to also add a prorate. So we're going to go ahead and select prorate. And we're going to say that that amount is going to be charged on the date that they move in, which is January 17th. And we're going to go ahead and say that the total amount of that rent is going to be, uh, let's see, what's the 17th? Probably somewhere around 500 bucks. We'll just say that. We can also add any security deposits, including pet deposits, key deposits, whatever types of deposits you have. And you can also add in a bunch of other stuff. Let's say you have pet rents and you have parking rent and whatever other fees that you charge, you can add in all of that information here. And that is going to show up on the lease. And the system is automatically going to be generating these invoices for you. So you don't even have to think about it anytime in the future. We'll click next step. All right, it's going to automatically import. Again, these are things that are coming from the gear wheel icon in the upper right hand corner, as well as on the property level. It's going to automatically pull in what your late fee settings are and your grace period settings are. And it's also going to pull in your management fee invoices. Now, this is something I do want to point out to you real quick. On the management fee, it's going to ask you for a first rent payment commission and ongoing rent commission. What this means is this is what is the commission that you want to charge the owner for the first month after the tenant pays rent. So if the tenant moves in, they pay rent on that first month, what is your commission that you're going to earn? Now, in some rental markets, this is going to be 5%. It might be the same as what the ongoing is, whether that's 2%, 3%, or whatever. And you can go ahead and enter in whatever percentage you want. Now, in this particular case, the percentage of rent is, uh, let's say, 50% because we're in a hot rental market. And the uh, promotion that we put out there for real estate agents was that they would get a 30% commission if they brought me a qualified tenant. And so I'm going to charge the owner 50% because I'm going to collect 20% and then pay that 30% to whatever locators brought me those qualified tenants. And then each month after that, I'm going to charge a 3% commission for ongoing rent management fees. Next, you can go ahead and select who's responsible for what in terms of utilities, and then click next step. From here, you're going to go ahead and select whether or not your tenants are required to purchase renter's insurance. Now, if your tenants have already provided you renter's insurance, you can set this toggle to no. Otherwise, if you set it to yes, when the tenant goes to sign this uh, lease agreement on the tenant cloud platform, they are going to be required to either do one of two things, either provide renter's insurance by uploading proof of insurance, usually the cover page and whatever other information you need, or they're going to be required to purchase renter's insurance. We have um, Assurant, which is integrated directly into the tenant cloud platform, which makes it super easy if your tenants don't already have renter's insurance. They can simply go through the a quick flow. It's like three or four steps uh, to put in their information for the rental property, which is automatically going to import from the tenant cloud system based on their lease information. And then they just have to select what uh, their information, what their payment format is going to be. So if they're going to pay with a debit or credit card and put in that information and then process the payment, and it's going to automatically add you as an interested party onto the insurance policy. What that means is in the event that the tenant cancels this insurance policy or something changes, you are going to get notified because you are an interested party. So assurance is going to notify you 
of those changes. And the tenant cannot change that that is automatic through the tenant cloud system. Otherwise, if they already have rentals insurance, simply set that to no and click next step. From here on the lease agreements tab, you're going to be able to select whether or not you want to include lease agreements. And in this case, we're gonna say yes, we already have these. Again, these lease documents are coming from the document template tool, which is under this gear wheel icon in the upper right corner. And it's gonna automatically pull in the template as well as the autofill element tags. Now you're gonna notice that the test tenant name is already here. If this was an actual tenant's name, it would be whatever it is, Mark Smith. Tom Jones, whatever. And it's automatically pulling in the date of the agreement, which is January 17th, 20, 2024. It's going to pull in the street address for the rental property. It's going to pull in the start date and the end date of the lease and the test tenant's name. And it's going to pull in the rent amount and how frequently it's going to be paid and when the rent is due. And it's going to pull in all the other, other information, including the late fees and the amount that the tenant needs to pay and the security deposit and the like. Now, if you need to customize this in any additional ways beyond what you've already customized it under the document template tool, you can do that right here by clicking and dragging signature boxes, initial boxes, date signed boxes, text boxes. If you need to put in additional information that's in the tenant cloud system, you can pull in autofill element tags into this document and it'll automatically fill in the information that's available from the application and from what you've already put in in this flow. You can also require default signatures so that at the end of the documents, it's going to automatically fill in your signature and the date you signed, and it's going to pull in the tenant's signature and the tenant's date that they signed. And you can also upload shared attachments or private attachments. Shared attachments are documents that you want to share with the tenant. So when you upload them here, it's going to show up both for you and the tenant. If you upload private attachments, those are only going to show up for you, not for the tenant. So this could be maybe a conversation you had with the owner of the property about this particular applicant. Maybe they were kind of in a gray area or maybe there was something that came up on the report that you weren't sure about and you reached out to the owner via email and then they responded or via TC Messenger and you uh, created a PDF of that conversation and then you upload it here so that in the event that something happens down the road, you have that for reference as to who approved them and why and the like. Once you're done, simply select send to sign or if you want to add additional documents to this lease, you can add those. So if you have a pet addendum that you want the tenant to agree to, again, it's going to pull in all that information about the pet information. And now you can click send to sign once you are happy with all of the documents that you are sending to the tenant. We have now moved them in, but you'll notice they're not actually moved in yet because this would say active. It says signature pending. Why? Because we sent it to this applicant to sign the lease. So it's not done until they e-sign it. You don't have any agreement in place until they have e-signed this agreement. So the tenant is going to automatically get a email address or email to this email address telling them, hey, landlord so-and-so is requesting that you sign this lease document in Tenant Cloud. Please log in to view the lease document and sign it. And so once they sign it, it's going to change to active. And then the tenant is going to be able to view that lease information. They're going to start getting all of the invoices that are relevant to that lease. So their security deposit, their pet deposit, their first month's rent invoice that's prorated. And then every month after that, it's going to automatically start generating all of the associated invoices that you set up when you were doing that initial lease that we just walked through. And so all of that information is going to be in here for you as well, including any attachments you might have uploaded. And you are going to be able to view the tenant's uh, lease inform or their uh, ledger information as well. So that is how you move in a tenant in the tenant cloud platform. It is very simple, very easy to use. And all of your tenants are going to be listed underneath your tenants tab. And when you click through into a tenants profile, you're going to be able to view their profile, their leases, their transactions, meaning all the invoices that have been created. Now, these are all invoices that are from prior leases that I've done on different demos. 
Uh, these are not all from that lease that we just created. You're going to be able to view their insurance information. You're going to be able to view the applicants that are related to this tenant as well as this tenant themselves. And you're going to be able to view the requests on this page that have come from this tenant as well. So a whole lot of information available here right on the tenant's profile page. And you'll notice this little icon here. Again, this is that timeline icon that is available to show you all of the important things that have happened with this tenant over the course of time and any re relevant invoices that have been charged and any important things that have happened really at all in the system with this tenant. And so you'll notice that uh, the invitation we just sent has been logged here. And so you can see that information available on this tenant's profile. Now, once a tenant has moved in, they're going to start putting in maintenance requests, right? And so they're going to put in maintenance requests, and those are going to come through right here. Now, your tenants can create them, but you can also, of course, add in manual requests. So you can put that in here. Now, there are a few different ways that you can view this information here. And we can change the format depending on which plan you're on. You're going to have additional functionality. So there's different ways that you can view these maintenance requests. So this is more like a Kanban board, which is available on some of the higher plans. And it just makes it a lot easier to see how a maintenance request is progressing. So as it comes in, it's new. Then when you drag and drop it over here, it becomes in progress. And then once it's in progress, you can then put it in review and then resolved or if it's canceled or even deferred status. So depending on your plan, this may look a little bit different. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and click add request because we don't have a tenant that has put one in. And we can do a basic or an advanced request depending on how much information and details you want to put in. I will say that again, the maintenance request tool on the tenant cloud platform is one of the most advanced and robust maintenance tools out there uh, in our segment of the market for property managers and landlords for property management software. It is a very powerful tool and you are really going to want to get to know the tenant cloud maintenance tool and how to really utilize it to most uh, efficiently manage your rental properties. So again, you're going to notice this steps, the steps across the top, and it's going to just ask us for basic information or we can use smart search. And so in this case, we're just going to say it's an appliance. We're going to say that it's the dishwasher and we're going to say that it's uh, for some reason just not turning on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we can also put in relevant information. So this is something that the tenant can also do on their end. This is just one of the many things that makes this tool so powerful is it eliminates a lot of that back and forth between you and your tenants when they submit a maintenance request. If you have been a property manager or landlord for any amount of time, then you know that you have probably gotten some pretty crazy maintenance requests that have come in that say outlet isn't working. Okay, great. Which outlet isn't working? There's about 20 in your rental. And they might even say bedroom outlet isn't working. Okay, well, that doesn't help either because there's like seven outlets in the bedroom alone. So which one is it? So this allows the tenant to actually or you if let's say you found this through an inspection of one of your units or your maintenance guys did or uh, your tenant did whoever did it doesn't matter they can use this tool to put in this information so what they can do is they can go ahead and add in a photo or upload a file that provides information about what exactly the problem is and so they could show a picture showing that them pressing the button maybe and it's not coming on uh, or maybe they can put in a 15 second video showing them trying to push the button and it doesn't come on. And maybe they show you that they closed the door all the way because maybe that's part of the issue. They didn't close the door all the way. So it's not going to power on to let them run the washing machine or whatever it might be. It really helps to eliminate a lot of that back and forth between you and the tenant. And so really encouraging your tenants to also utilize this is very helpful. A lot of tenants do use this automatically because they too don't like the whole back and forth. So it's easier for them to just go ahead and upload a file with a photo or a video to explain what's going on. Next, you can put in additional details about this particular maintenance ticket and then click continue. You can select the property that this is for. So we're going to go ahead and select Grove Street. We're going to say that the issue is normal, but you can set it to critical if it's extremely important. 
and great now we can assign a service pro now this is helpful if we already have somebody that needs to handle this ticket this could be an internal maintenance tech or it could be somebody outside of your management company maybe a contractor that you keep on call that you call and assign this ticket to uh, you can have them set up a service pro account in the tenant cloud system for free and you can assign this ticket to them and they'll get notified and say hey this ticket's been assigned to you by property manager so and so click here to view the information they go in and they can see all the information that you provided them with including the 15 second video or the the image and all the details about it and what unit it's for and the property it's for and the contact information for the tenant if you shared that with them and all that information is available to the service pro now we also have on our higher plans we have the option for you to actually add team members so you could actually assign it to a team member as well if you wanted to inside the maintenance ticket here so if you have a maintenance service tech or a maintenance lead or somebody who handles your maintenance tickets internally, you can assign it to them to handle. You can actually set that to be an automatic assignment. If you have a team member who is like your maintenance lead, you can actually have all incoming maintenance requests automatically assigned to them so that they can then reassign it to whoever they need to reassign it to, whether that's a service pro or another team member or whatever. Or you can find a service pro. Now, this is a beta tool in our system that we are building out. And so if you are in a larger metropolitan area, then you may already have some service pros in our network where you can find a service pro who will bid on doing that work for you and getting the job done. So you can find a service pro. If you don't need to do any of those things, you can just click that X button and X out and you can log in here and view the information for what's going on. If you need to revisit either of those options, you can of course request a quote or you can also assign it to a team member. You can request approval if you get a bid back for this. Let's say you do assign it to a service pro and you get a bid. You can actually submit those bids to the owner by selecting to um upload the bid information and the amounts for each one, and then the owner can then review those requests and approve whichever one they want to proceed with. You can also, like I said, add it to an assignee, so whether that is a team member, uh, so my team member here, or whether it's a local contractor that you want to assign the ticket to, you can assign it. And of course, you also have the option to assign this piece, uh, or assign a piece of equipment to this ticket. So for example, if you had a um, dishwasher at this property that you had entered into this property, you would actually be able to enter that particular dishwasher as a part of this maintenance ticket. And so what that means is when you do this work on that dishwasher, it will automatically track the history of every time that your maintenance team has ever touched this dishwasher. And it'll show up under that particular piece of equipment. So I'll actually show you what that looks like. We'll click view this. I don't actually have any equipment on this property, so let me find another one real quick. Oh, that's the one I was just on. Let's go ahead and click equipment here. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go with the AC condenser. We're gonna click view equipment. And when you add equipment in, this could be anything. This could be pools, this could be pool pumps, this could be roofing, this could be siding, this could be gutters, this could be, uh, this could be AC condensers like this one. This could be refrigerators and stoves and dishwashers and anything at all on the property. You could add it in here as a piece of equipment. And you can put in the equipment size and color and weight and insurance inf or warranty information. Insurance information too, really, you could add in. And you can also set up recurring checkups to frequently check up on this piece of equipment. So for instance, if you do routine maintenance checkups on your AC systems, let's say you do an annual inspection of them, you can set that up so it automatically generates those maintenance tickets each year at a set time that you choose to go ahead and check that uh, particular piece of equipment. And this is what I was talking about right here, where anytime you touch this piece of equipment, these are all maintenance tickets that I have created over the years for this particular piece of equipment. And so then you can click through and view each of these tickets. And then you're going to be able to pull all this information out in reports to see how much money have I spent at this property for these different pieces of equipment 
because if I've touched this piece of equipment this many times in this short period of time, it's probably costing me more money than it's worth. So then I can view, okay, well, do I have warranty information on this? And is it out of warranty? If it's out of warranty, well, then I'm probably gonna need to replace it or because it's costing me so much money or if it's still in warranty, I need to reach out to the whoever holds that warranty and get it replaced or repaired by them instead of me constantly dealing with this piece of equipment. And so a lot of really helpful information here. And of course, you can add an attachment. So if you have that warranty document, for instance, you can add that here under attachments. So all of that ties into the maintenance request system. And so that's just another way that is how powerful the maintenance request system is. Now, there are several other things that we get into, but we really don't have time. And we've already gone a long time already, but I really encourage you to explore the Tenant Cloud maintenance system because it really is very powerful, very efficient. And there is a ton of functionality in there for you to take advantage of so that you can run your properties as efficiently as possible. Now, there are three different types of contacts in the system. There's actually four, including you as the property manager. Uh, there's four more. You have team members, which you can add under, again, the gear wheel icon under your team administrative tool. And you do need to be on a higher plane to have those team members, but that's an extremely powerful tool. Everybody has their own unique login with their own secure information. Everybody can log in through their mobile phones with the mobile app or a mobile friendly browser. And that's one of the things that you're gonna wanna know about any property management system is, is it mobile friendly? Is it mobile first? Tenant Cloud is both. It has both a mobile first experience, but it also has a desktop version as well. So whether you need to access it from our mobile mobile app or whether you need to access it from a desktop or just the mobile browser, you can do all of that on the tenant cloud system. And the full functionality for the most part is going to be there no matter which uh, tool you use to log in, whether it's a, a tablet or a phone or a desktop or a laptop. And the same is true for your team members, your tenants, your owners, and your service pros. So everybody can log in from a mobile phone anywhere they have an internet connection and pay rent, submit maintenance requests, uh, look at maintenance requests that have been assigned to them if they're a service pros, look at reports and accounting and owner distributions and owner management fees if they're an owner, and look at the reports if they're an owner if you've chosen to show share those reports with the owners. And so the owners tab is another really powerful part of the tenant cloud system, because if I'm connected with an owner, which you'll see this for all of your different types of contacts, whether or not you're con uh, connected or not, not connected, connected, connected is green. You can click through and see which properties this particular owner is the owner of that you manage on their behalf. And you can choose which reports you want them to be able to view from their account. So you can go in here and literally just click which ones you want them to see or not see. If you deselect it, they can no longer see it in their account. If you have been a property manager for any amount of time for an owner, a third party owner, then you know that there is a lot of back and forth between owners and property managers. And a lot of times it's last minute. Maybe the owner needs to go in front of a board or maybe they have are doing a refinance and the bank asks them for all this information they weren't expecting. And now they need a rent roll and they need lease statements and they need uh, online payment information to make for the bank to do all of their due diligence for the refinance, whatever it might be. And they need it by that night or by the next morning. So you have to drop everything you're doing, which is a lot, and you have to get them that information. Not in Tenant Cloud. In Tenant Cloud, you can choose to just automatically allow them to access that information whenever they need it. So if they have that last minute refinance request or that meeting with the board, they can just log into their account and view it. And it's live information. If I did an update 10 minutes ago in this system or two minutes ago, it's going to be live in whatever report that they pull right now. And so allowing them to access that information is incredibly powerful and very helpful and it eliminates a lot of that back and forth and last minute request type stuff etc this also gives you a snapshot of all of the relevant information with the owner again i encourage you to explore this there's a lot of functionality in here that we simply don't have the time to go through but you can uh, view, you can get their 1099 tax form, you can share the reports, you can uh, view the property owner statement, 
and you can see what properties they're assigned to. You can see what active agreements you have in place or what agreements are pending signatures. So just like the tenant, you can send the owner an owner agreement document for them to e-sign and you can e-sign it and it's just an owner agreement like you would have with any owner except for now instead of doing it in paper documents through DocuSign or whatever you do outside of the tenant cloud system now you can do it inside of the tenant cloud system without ever leaving the tenant cloud platform you can of course add in agreements add invoice and you'll notice this friendly little timeline icon again where anything that relevant that has ever happened with this particular contact uh, contact is going to be here in the timeline history. Again, this is true for service pros. Again, connected, not connected. And so we have a plumber. And so we can go in here and view a lot of important information, uh, get a 1099 tax form, view the provider statement report for this particular provider, view any outstanding invoices and pay those invoices, the timeline icon again, transactions tab, and a lot more. So again, Another huge part of the Tenant Cloud platform is the Service Pro, as we've already touched on in other parts of the Tenant Cloud system. And of course, you're going to want to view all this information and record transactions because even though most of what happens in the Tenant Cloud system is automated, and I encourage you to automate as much as possible of your day-to-day -day routine in the tenant cloud system, whether that is automating like I showed you with the equipment and automatic, automatically generating the tickets to uh, go ahead and look at each of those different um, tools or those different accessories or whatever it is in the, your property, whether it's an HVAC system or a stove or whatever, automate that. If you can set up automatic reminders to for team members to do certain things throughout the week or month or quarter, set those up. Don't worry about manually having to remember those things and manually creating those things. Set them up. Set up automatic reminders. Set up automatic maintenance tickets. Set up automatic inspection tickets for invoices. Set up those automatic owner distribution invoices. Set up the automatic management fee invoices. Set up the automatic uh, grace periods and automatic late fees and automatic everything. But even if you automate everything, you're still going to need to occasionally do a manual invoice, right? So if you need to do that, you can go to the accounting tab to the transactions button and click money in or money out. And when you select either of these options, it's going to have a drop down, which is going to show you all of the options available to you. So for example, if you need to return a deposit from here, which when you're doing a move out for a tenant, you can actually do it through that flow. Uh, or you can do it here. You can apply a deposit to outstanding invoices. You can send out owner distributions. You can send out bulk payments. You can do a general expense. You can do a property expense. And likewise, the same thing with money in. If you need to manually create an invoice, a one-time invoice, you can do that here as well. If you want to view your recurring invoices or create new ones, you can do that here by doing money in, money out, and create recurring invoices here. If you want to view your management tools, you can do that here. And this is going to show you your management fee invoices and your owner distributions and all of the invoices that are associated with that particular owner and that property for that given month. This is a demo account, so I don't really have any owner distributions created right now because I haven't been collecting rent on any of these properties. You can also view balances and under the balances tab, you're going to be able to view which tenants owe you money and how much money they actually owe you. And so for this tenant right here, the balance is $122,155. That's not real because again, this is a uh, demo account. But if you wanted to view more information about the breakdown of what that amount is comprised of, you could go right here to their account ledger. If you want to send them a notice right from the tenant cloud system, you can click send notice. And this is going to send them a template that you have created again under the gear wheel icon in upper right corner. This is where you would control these. Uh, you would be able to send them a uh, notice of their past due rent. So for example, uh, you could, this is just a test notice. 
Uh, it just automatically pulls in stuff with initials dates, just like the lease contract that I showed you before when we went through that flow. And so you can use the same autofill element tags, but ideally you would have already created this document under the document templates tool. And so it would automatically pull up how much money they are they owe for the month. So it would show up like the past due rent and any late fees or whatever information you wanted to include in that letter. You can even require that they sign it, acknowledging that they received it. You'll also get a timestamp in Tenant Cloud showing you when they did view it, but you can also as an added measure use the default signature as well. And then once this is generated and you send it to them, you can then print that out from the conversation uh, with that tenant so that you can then send it via physical mail or post it to their door or whatever your state or local area requires for your late rent notices. And so again, there's a ton of powerful tools that are sprinkled in throughout here that we don't have all the time to go through. But the next big one is going to be reports because as a landlord, you need to keep a close eye on your finances. And so you need to look for a robust financial reporting tool that tracks income and expenses and be able to generate those in reports and as well as possibly integrate with actual accounting software like QuickBooks, which Tenant Cloud does. Tenant Cloud integrates with QuickBooks. It's a one-way export. So anything that's happening in your Tenant Cloud system is going to automatically out export out to your QuickBooks Online account, and you can handle that information there as well. But Tenant Cloud does have its own set of reports. There's about 18 or 19 different reports in this system, as well as two little helpful tools for depreciation tracking and amortization tracking. But the rest of these are all reports that you can pull in the Tenant Cloud system to get out helpful information. The other report that is not so much a report based on your information, but helps you to price your rentals properly in your market is our rentability report. It is powered by Rent Range and it's right integrated right into Tenant Cloud. So you can actually put in information for your property how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms it is, and you can order a rentability report to help you to understand your local market better. And I'm not talking about your state or even your city. This gets down into the nitty gritty details of your neighborhood and the local area to better understand your market and what other rentals that are comparable to yours are renting out for. How long are they sitting on the market? How much rent are they getting? How many bedrooms and bathrooms are they in comparison to yours and square footage and the like? And so it really gives you a really good insight to understand how to price your rental in the marketplace, which is important because, for example, if there's a apartment or home or whatever similar to yours that's running for fourteen hundred, but you're listing yours for eleven hundred, well, you're leaving three hundred dollars a month on the table. And so the rentability report is definitely worth it to really get a good understanding of what rentals are going for so that you don't do that. But you also want to know that you're not overpricing your rental because that could mean that your rental sits on the market for a long time and you lose cash flow. So instead of just $300 a month, and maybe now you're losing thirteen or $1,400 a month because that's what your rent is and it's sitting there for one, two, three months and it's not renting out because you're just priced too high. And so the rentability report also helps you with that. So it's a great report to pull and get a better understanding of your local marketplace. The other reports are lease statements, property owner reports, all kinds of helpful information here, tax preparation report, which is really helpful, really helps you just fill out for the Schedule E. It's got all the information that you need as long as you've been keeping track of it in the Tenant Cloud system, which again, hopefully you've automated as much of that as possible. And this report really just fills all that information out. You can hand it to your accountant or if you do your own Schedule E, you can put all that information in and it really lightens the load during your uh, end of year finances and taxes. Now that you've gotten the reports and you've been paying the owner their distributions and you've uh, been collecting your management fees and you've moved your tenants in and you've been handling all your maintenance requests and all of that stuff is going on, you're probably going to want to learn more about the Tenant Cloud system. And so as we touched on early in this presentation, there are a lot of resources available to you. So for example, you can go to our help center right here. 
You can also take a product tour, which is going to walk you through with little pop-up boxes across the system. And it's going to be about a 20 to 30 step product tour, which is really going to highlight all of the really cool parts of the system that help you do your job easier and automate as much of your day-to-day -day routine as possible. In the help center, you can visit the help center or you can create a uh, support ticket. Now, there are two different types of tickets you can submit. One, you can submit a support ticket or you can give us a call or you can select that you have an idea. So if there's anything that you've experienced in the platform on Tenant Cloud that you think could be improved or you think that a new feature or an integration of a different software might be helpful to help you do your job better, let us know. Our product management team loves to get feedback from our users. In fact, every year, the number of improvements in the Tenant Cloud system is roughly around 70% of those improvements are a direct result of user feedback. And so don't think that this is something that is just here where you put it in and it goes into this dark black hole of infinity that nobody ever looks at. It absolutely does. Our product management team looks at each of these reviews and ideas that comes through in the tenant cloud system to better analyze what our users are looking for. And the more people that ask for a specific feature or improvement, the more likely it is to be done. So don't think that, oh, well, three or five or 10 or 100 other people have probably already requested this. That doesn't matter. In fact, it matters that if you see something that you think could be improved, put it in. Because if you're one person out of 100, that makes it 101. And that carries a lot of weight with our product management team based on the volume of people asking for a specific thing. Now, if we go back to the Help Center, you can click the Visit Help Center button, which is going to take you into the actual Help Center. And if we have a team member available to help, they are going to be in this little bubble icon right here. You can click and chat. These are real people. This is not uh, a automated chat system. These are real people that are part of our Help Center team. A lot of them actually have property management experience. A lot of them have been with the Tenant Cloud platform for many years now, and so they are well-versed on just about anything that you would want to inquire about. Likewise, there is a search bar, so you can put in a search. Your tenants, your service pros, and your owners also have their own designated sections in the Help Center. So if it's a tenant, they would select tenant, and they can put in a keyword, and then it's going to show them all these different categories and view tutorials for tenants and some of the top articles that cover the hottest topics about the Tenant Cloud platform. And then other additional uh, boxes down here with information to submit a ticket or call us or request a call from our sales team uh, to do a sales inquiry. And then, of course, our support number and support hours listed down here below and the links to get our apps, whether it's the Apple or the Android Play Store. So, again, a lot of very helpful uh, tabs in here that you can check out. And again, if you type in just a simple keyword, it's going to show you all kinds of stuff as it relates to a lease. So how do I remove a tenant from a lease? How do I renew a lease? And then when you click through, it's going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that thing. And it's going to give you the text as well of what you need to do to renew a lease and how easy it is to do that. And this walks you through processes that you probably see now that are similar to the demo that we just went through. And so there will be other related articles. How do I create a lease? How do I edit a lease? How do I end a lease? And the like. So definitely hope that you take advantage of all of the support, especially if you are first just now starting out on the Tenant Cloud system. There's going to be a learning curve no matter what platform you are on. And our team is here to help you get through that initial learning curve and to understand the Tenant Cloud system, take advantage of all of the powerful tools and features that are available to you, because ultimately we want to make your life as a property manager a lot easier than it was yesterday. So Again, we thank you for joining this Tenant Cloud webinar, and I know that uh, you take time out of your busy schedule to do so. So hopefully the information that you have found in this presentation has been helpful. We're going to close the presentation section out, and we're going to answer your questions live right now.